All right, we're back in arcade again, working on the Star Trek Next Generation pinball machine. And we have a couple more issues to deal with. Uh, I believe we have a problem with the optos under the ball trough, which is located underneath the play field. So any time that you uh, raise the play field up, you should unload the balls first. So let's open the coin door and put it in test mode. go to clear out balls so that's what we want to do so we have to shut the door to energize the coils and it'll start kicking the balls out Catch them one at a time as they, they come down. So that's four, and the other two will be loaded into the guns. So now we have all six balls. Uh, Star Trek Next Generation uses six balls. So. Um, now we can go ahead and raise the play field. All right, to gain access to the ball trough, we have to raise the play field. Uh, we've already taken the balls out. So all you got to do is put your hand under the apron here between the flippers. Pull straight up on it. Then you can grab this bar here. There's another bar on the other side. You pick it up and just pull it back towards you. And we're going to set the end right down in this groove in the, in the middle here. That's how far we have to take it in order to get to the ball trough. Now here's the ball trough right here. When the balls drain past the flippers, they fall through this hole right here and they roll down into the trough. On this side you have the infrared LED board and on the other side you have the infrared receiver. Now there are uh, six balls in a pinball machine and this this machine and there are six uh, infrared LEDs on this board and six receivers on the other side. The ball trough has six holes that go all the way through it. So the infrared LED shines the infrared beam through the trough and receives it on the other side. When that beam is making contact with the receiver uh, it's the same as if the, a switch, a physical switch is open. When the ball rolls between the uh, transmitter and the receiver and breaks that infrared light, uh, that's the same thing as closing a physical switch. So that, that's how uh, that works. Now what happens a lot of times uh, these LEDs, infrared LEDs will either go bad or the receivers can go bad and then sometimes they've been known to have problems with the resistors on the board which power the LEDs to fatigue and, and break due to the uh, vibration from the solenoid here which is the ball up kicker which kicks the ball out of the trough and into the shooter lane. So uh, that's a common problem on, on these machines. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to go ahead and take uh, the board off and using a, uh, a camera, you can't see the infrared uh, light with the naked eye, but most uh, video cameras or picture cameras, uh, digital cameras, uh, you, you can uh, actually see the infrared LED lit up. So. Uh, that's the next thing we're going to do. All right, well, we've got the uh, infrared LED board off. This right here is the ball trough. And this is where the balls uh, are held in the game when the game's not being played. Uh, this game uses six balls, and it has six uh, optos switches, for one for each ball. 
Now, when you start the game, it doesn't use all six in the uh, trough here. It will launch, I believe, two of the balls, or no, not three balls, I think. And I believe, I could be wrong about this, but I believe uh, after the game loads the balls in various places under the play field uh, to get ready for the, for the game, it'll have three balls left. So you'll have ball one, two, and three in, in these positions, and these three, I believe, will be empty. Now, I could be wrong about that, but I, I think that's the way it works. All six of these have to be working because it, it, it lets the game know where the balls are. When, it, when a ball drains, it drops down into um, the ball trough here. comes right, right in through here. And it rolls down and it will roll past each one of these sensors. And if it's a ball already in the one spot, it will stop in two spot and it will let the game know it has two balls there or three balls or whatever. So anyway, it has to be working, and a lot of times on this game, due to the uh, vibrations from the up kicker here, which um, kicks the balls out of the uh, ball trough into the launcher so that it can launch a ball, uh, that vibration causes problems, you know, on, on the board. So anyway... Uh, we can see whether or not we have a problem with any of the infrared LEDs with a, a camera. You can't see it with the naked eye, but as you can see, uh, it's definitely lit up. So you just need to check each one looking through a, a camera and make sure they're all lit. And there we have, there's one that's not lit. All of them are working except for that one right there. So that's the one we're going to have to look at. We'll go ahead and turn the game off and unplug it and take it over to the, uh, the soldering station. And um, we'll take a look and see if it's the LED itself bad. I believe I have one that might work. Um, it's not specific for this game, but uh, they're, they're the ones that I use in the Terminator Salvation infrared detectors. So I, I believe they'll work. And uh, anyway, let's go uh, take a look and, and see. But before we do that, um, this infrared LED is, is, is working right here on, on the end of the board. So what I like to do is I'll, I'll take the board and I have the game in switch test mode. So uh, I want to check the other board, the receiver board, to see that each one of the receivers is working. So all I have to do is take that one uh, infrared LED and hold it up in front of the hole. And you can, you can hear it. And I can test each one like that. And if I hear that beep or I can actually see it on the test screen, then I know that the receiver is working. So all, all these receivers are working. So I, I know that the receiver board is good. So we'll just have to turn our attention to that one uh, LED that's not working on this board. Alright, well we're here at the soldering station now and I have my infrared LED that I was going to use to replace this one here if it turned out to be bad, but further inspection of the board uh, revealed that the LED is probably good. Um, it's commonly known on these pinball machines that this particular board uh, has problems with the leads on the resistors breaking from the vibration of the uh, up kicker solenoid that kicks the balls out of the trough. So uh, sure enough, uh, this one here, I, I followed the trace on the board and it's powered from, from this res uh, resistor. So I got looking closer and sure enough the resistor lead had broke. Didn't come unsoldered but it actually the, the lead itself had broke. So all we're going to have to do to fix this since I don't have the resistors in stock. If I had a resistor I'd just go ahead and solder a new resistor in. But what we can do is we can just make a quick fix by putting it back down uh, resting against the uh, 
where it broke and just taking some solder and building up a little bridge of solder and put it on a little thick that way it'll beef it up and hopefully it'll hold for a while and that that's just a quick little fix uh, we may go ahead and, and order some of these resistors so we'll have them and the next time we have a problem we'll just go ahead and swap out the resistor but if you don't have them this is a quick easy little fix just uh, take your, your soldering on and well, we're going to show you now it appears that these uh, dark blue resistors are the original looking at the solder joints on this one right here uh, it doesn't it looks factory so the lighter colored resistors or more than likely replacements that have already been replaced at one time or another. So anyway, let's go ahead and uh, solder this back together and then we can put it back on and, and try it out and, and find out if, it, if that's all the problem. Okay, we have the resistor pushed back down into place. So all we have to do now is take our soldering iron and bridge some solder across it. And get the camera to focus there. That should take care of the problem. So let's test it and find out. Okay, we've hooked the infrared LED board back up to power and as you can see with the lights turned out and looking through the camera now the, the one that wasn't working is now working so now we have all six of the LEDs uh, working so now we can go ahead and uh, put the board back on the trough alright we have the infrared LED board back on uh, screwed back up to the, uh, the ball trough so that should be ready to test now now we had one other little problem that we've taken care of and the ball return lanes you have the right and the left which the ball returns back to the flipper uh, these have electronic sensors on them uh, it's called an eddy switch and it's a magnetic uh, inductive switch and it has a little control board it has one on each side and it has the little sensor which is underneath the play field kind of hard to see but screwed up to the bottom of the play field right underneath the uh, ball return lane and the board right here has a little adjustable pot on it and that pot has to be adjusted correctly uh, so that the it'll sense the ball when it when it rolls over top of that uh, eddy sensor and it has a little LED on the board so when when you fire the game up uh, that little LED should be on but the way you adjust it is you have to take a screwdriver and I like to use a non-metallic screwdriver but you, you can use a metallic one as long as you don't short anything out and you just put it in the pot and you back it off I think counterclockwise until the LED goes out then you rotate it clockwise till it comes on and then you back it off just a little bit and you can test it by putting it in switch test mode and just rolling the ball over top of the, the out lane and it'll uh, indicate uh, the switch is closed when the ball rolls over it so it normally stays open and when the ball rolls over it, it it's just like it makes contact if it was a physical switch so that was the other little problem I had and that's, that's been taken care of too so anyway now we can uh, put the play field back down and we're gonna put it back in switch test mode and we're gonna let the balls release the balls one by one and be able to look at the switch test and see the balls actually rolling over or through the, um, the infrared switches and it'll indicate it on the test screen okay well we have the game in test mode and as you can see on the switch edge test uh, these dots in, in this square represent each one is a switch in the game. The ones that are surrounded by a box, like the ones in the middle, this line here, 
uh, that means that the switches are closed. The ones that are just a single dot mean those switches are open. Now, these six dots right up through this line right here represent the six LEDs on that board that we just fixed the resistor on. So when we put the balls back in and it goes into the ball trough, each one of these one at a time will fill in and uh, represent, we'll, we'll let you know that it, it detects the ball at those switches. Now there are two more switches right here which are the uh, return lane switches which are the eddy switches which I just talked about and we're going to put those on the eddy switch and make sure that they're functioning too. So first let me take a ball and I'll put it in the left eddy switch and there it is right there, the left return lane and as I move the ball past the switch you can see right now the switch is engaged and now it's not engaged. So let's try the right one. Okay, and there's the right return lane. And now it's off, now it's on. So both of the eddy switches on the return lanes are working. So now let's just put the balls in the drain and let them fill up the uh, ball trough one at a time. And as the balls roll in the trough, you'll be able to see each one of the optos as it moves down until the ball gets in its final resting spot. So here's ball number one. Ball number two. Ball number three. Ball number four. Ball number five. And ball six. Well, I was actually backwards about that myself, but uh, actually it was this row right here, and I was backwards. <laughs> the dot means the switch is closed, because now we have uh, six balls in the, in the trough, so the ones that have the box around it are the open switches, and the, uh, the dots are the closed switches, so I, I got that backwards myself. But anyway, you get the basic idea, and that's basically how you test every switch on the game. Uh, like we also have the optics on the cannons. If When it loads a ball in the cannon, so if I put my finger between the, the cannon, there's the, the left gun shooter. Now the right one. Yeah, so you can see how, how that works. And the physical switches on the game, too like the, the left drain here, the left out lane, and then we have the, the right out lane. So basically you can test all your switches in the, in the switch ed, edge mode and you can go through like here's the spinner and uh, then you got your switches on your ramps and all that but I've already gone through all that and everything else seems to be fine. Well it looks like we now have the optos in the ball trough working and we have the eddy sensors adjusted and working correctly so now that only leaves one uh, major problem uh, every now and then it seems like the ball diverters, one of the ball diverters under the play field is not working correctly so next video we're gonna uh, open up the play field and we're gonna investigate uh, and find out why the ball diverter works sometimes and sometimes it's not. So that's all for now. Uh, till, till next time in the arcade. We'll see you.